Football fever is gripping the globe once again, and the beautiful game is impassioning sports fans all over the world. Even we here at Triple Jump have been known to sit in front of the TV during international games, yelling such phrases as, why didn't you pass it? And that was never a penalty, as if our impotent wailing could affect a football match taking place on the other side of the world. This time, however, we thought we'd get even more involved and bring you a footy-themed list to keep you entertained during those empty hours between matches. You're very well. As the most popular sport in the world, football has been well represented on consoles and computers over the years, from the early days of sensible soccer and FIFA to the present day of well, just FIFA really, let's be honest. Kids and adults alike have spent countless hours in front of their TV screens coaxing digital men to kick digital balls into digital goals in a Digimon world. For this list, we've called up 10 of the weirdest football video games we could find and have presented them to you in one handy highlight package. We hope you get a kick out of it. Balls. I'm Walrus Wanderer's top scorer Ben from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 strangest football video games. Number 10. Red Card. Released in 2002 for the GameCube, Xbox, and PS2, Red Card was a football game with an emphasis on putting the boot in. The European cover art featured infamous football hardman turned movie star Vinnie Jones painfully grabbing the delicate area of a generic footballer with Ryan Giggs' head hastily pasted on top. As such, potential buyers had a pretty good idea of what they were going to be in for with this one, and it wasn't going to be pretty. For those who aren't in the know, if a player is shown a red card in a football game, it usually means they've been sent off the pitch for multiple infractions or one blatant and dangerous foul. Red Card the video game actively encouraged this kind of behaviour and featured a meter that, once charged, allowed the player to unleash special moves or particularly violent fouls. With high boots flying everywhere, bone-crunching tackles coming in left, right and centre, and violent conduct being the order of the day, Red Card presented a version of football that would make even the most bloodthirsty fan wince. If all that disregard for the safety of players didn't scratch your weird football itch, you could play as teams of aliens, apes or dolphins and crush their shin bones instead. Or I suppose their tail bones? Number 9. Chris Kamara's Street Soccer This footballing oddity was released for the PlayStation in 2000 and featured the name and likeness of former player and legendary pundit Chris Kamara. Responsible for one of the finest moments ever broadcast on British TV, Chris Kamara is a well-known and well-loved media personality over here in the UK, but the same can't really be said for his video game. Chris Kamara's Street Soccer presented somewhat sluggishly paced five-a-side football featuring teams from cities all over the world. The squads consisted of denim-wearing young men and women who took to arenas situated in temples, coliseums and on top of skyscrapers to finally find out which city is truly the best at street football. It will be the victors. London, England, Paris, France, Prague, Norway… wait, hold on. Geographical blunders aside, Chris Kamara's Street Soccer at least featured a few different game modes to put players through their paces, including cup tournaments, time attack, and penalty shootouts. The game also managed to beat EA to the punch, predating the original FIFA Street by around five years. Does this mean that Chris Kamara's Street Soccer is worth taking the time to track down and play? Well, as the great man once said, I don't know, Jeff. Number 8. Headmaster Released for the PlayStation VR in 2016, this frame interactive developed experience concentrates on one particular aspect of the beautiful game – heading. After all, what could be more suitable to play on a heavy head-mounted peripheral that is wired into your expensive television and PS4 setup than a motion that requires you to leap enthusiastically and thrust your head around? Absolutely nothing, that's who! In Headmaster, the player takes on the role of an established professional footballer who has hit a barren spot in his career. The goals have dried up, and the gaffer has blamed our beleaguered protagonist's lack of heading skills. As such, he is sent back to soccer school for a variety of noggin-focused training regimens. Cue lots of heading balls at or through targets before you're set free from this dystopian forehead bruising nightmare. Mostly well received by reviewers and consumers, Headmaster offered a quirky style and some genuinely funny moments. Its smooth and entertaining gameplay experience was let down only by the fact that you're encouraged to dive around your living room wearing an expensive and delicate piece of kit on your head. Maybe it would have been better suited for the Kinect? Oh god, no, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. Number 7. Magnetic Soccer 
The next entry onto our list was published by Nintendo for the Game Boy back in 1992. Featuring players attached to plates that caused them to slide along pitch-spanning slots, it actually bore quite a resemblance to Foosball, a brutal offshoot of football in which all of the players are impaled with metal rods, severely limiting their movement. Magnetic Soccer was a Europe-only release for Nintendo's all-conquering handheld and provided a table football-inspired take on the sport for European gamers to enjoy. Each team had eight players who were arranged up and down the field in appropriate positions, and the player was responsible for sliding them from side to side, winning the ball and performing well-timed shots. Three pitch types were available, ground, grass, or ice, each of which affected how the ball moved around the field. Ice, really? If players timed their shot perfectly, they could temporarily incapacitate another player. This would leave a hole in the opposing team's formation which could be mercilessly exploited while the stricken player flailed about on the pitch like an upended tortoise, still being dragged back and forth by his unfeeling puppet master. It's a tough life, being a foosball player. I mean, just look at this guy and tell me those eyes don't tell a harrowing story. Number 6. Tecmo Cup Football Game if you were an NES owner back in the late 80s or early 90s and you'd played Tecmo's previous sports titles for the system, you might have expected Tecmo Cup football game, known as Tecmo Cup soccer game in America, to be a fairly standard, pixelated rendition of football. Tecmo Bowl and Tecmo Baseball, for example, both presented a real-time sporting gameplay experience that was as realistic as the technology would allow. Upon returning home with your brand new NES football game, though, you may have been a bit surprised to find out that the title played more like Final Fantasy than World Cup Italy. 90. Players did not directly control the footballers and instead interacted with them using text commands before watching the action unfold in super cool animated cutscenes. It had side quests, a little story to enjoy, and even hyper shots that would have confounded all but the very best keepers. The Japanese version of the game was based on the Captain Tsubasa manga series, which has had video game spin offs released as recently as 2020. The Western versions of the game were dramatically changed, with the big eyed, spiky hairdo sporting players replaced by Roy of the Rovers style characters with names like David and Cecil. Which is the cooler version? We'll leave that to you to decide. Number 5. Disney Sports Football Before Nintendo brought zany, over-the-top football featuring various well-known characters and corporate icons to the GameCube, Disney had already taken to the field with Disney Sports Football. It was known as Disney Sports Soccer in America, because over in the USA, Disney Sports Football was actually an American football game and both titles were developed by Konami when this was still a relatively reliable sign of quality. Much closer to actual football than Nintendo's similar offering that came a few years later, players could choose from various game modes and pick a team that consisted of an iconic Disney character backed up by a team of generic animal friends. Disney Sports Football surprised reviewers at the time, who found that there was a very competent sports title underneath that cute and colourful exterior. In fact, those who did take the plunge often found that things like possession, the ebb and flow of the game, and the score lines of the matches would often end up closer to reality than anything FIFA could manage at the time. So, there you have it, football fans. If you want realism in your sports titles, forget about Pro Evo and whatever EA are doing next year and choose the House of Mouse instead. Number 4. Football Mania Speaking of electronic arts, did you know that they've had at least one football-related dalliance that didn't have the FIFA label on it? Football Mania, again known as Soccer Mania in America, mixes the predominantly sphere-focused world of association football with the mostly rectangular world of LEGO, and was released on the PS2, PC, and Game Boy Advance back in 2002. This seems like a rather good fit, right? Mixing football with LEGO's humour and customization options sounds like an absolute treat. Create your own team, build a stadium, and maybe even get some of the many licensed characters that LEGO have access to in there. The hijinks would be limitless. Unfortunately, all of these lofty ideas are mere pipe dreams, as Football Mania was naught but a very simplistic football game with LEGO branding slapped on it. The gameplay was simple, seeming difficult at first, but featuring AI that was very easily exploitable so that the matches soon became insultingly easy. The GBA version was especially bad for this and was presented at an off-putting isometric angle as well. Not much to recommend then, but a LEGO football game is still a good idea. Definitely something we could build upon. <laughs> Number 3. Inazuma 11 
The first Inazuma 11 game on Nintendo DS was just the beginning for the franchise, with anime and manga series and numerous sequels spawning from those humble origins. Developed by Level 5, Inazuma 11 was a sporting RPG about a talented young goalkeeper named Mark, or Endo in Japanese, and his quest to take his school football team to legendary heights. The detailed plot featured many twists and turns, during which Mark gains the respect of rivals and learns more about his famous goalkeeping grandfather. Eventually, he goes face to face with the antagonistic Zeus team, who play in a floating palace stadium and boost their skills and physical prowess with performance-enhancing potions. Very naughty. Inazuma 11 allowed players to directly control the footballers and give them loads of options when it came to team formations, player positions, and outlandish special moves. You could even spend time roaming around the town and searching for new recruits to strengthen your team, and then hit the training ground to work on their skills once they joined you. By melding a wacky, sci-fi-tinted, overarching plot with a small-time underdog story in surprisingly satisfying fashion, Inazuma 11 was instantly likeable despite not being the biggest franchise around. The Gianfranco Zola of football games, if you will. Number 2. Sega Soccer Slam in 2002, Sega entered the realm of over-the-top football simulators with Sega Soccer Slam. Released for the Xbox, PS2, and GameCube, Sega Soccer Slam, despite its normal-sounding in-game commentary, had as much of a pro-wrestling vibe as it did a football one. The players were clad in brightly coloured, form-fitting uniforms, got big entrances and trash-talked each other, and each and every one of them seemed to be a national stereotype of some kind. The various teams on offer represented different parts of the world, but not specific countries or continents. For example, one team was made up of a person from Japan, a person from Hawaii, and an Australian to represent the Pacific Rim, and their home arena was called the Pacific Atoll. Other such geographically appropriate arenas included an oasis, a frosty castle, and the jungle canopy. Once the game started, players saw plenty of taunting and blustering, blatant violence, and repeated use of flashy special skills as the teams vied for victory upon the cramped four-a-side pitch. Despite the nationality profiling and dodgy accents, most reviewers and punters agreed that Sega had a solid game on their hands, but Sega Soccer Slam, like England's World Cup victory, has thus far proved to be a one-off. We can hope though, right? It's coming home and all that. Number 1. Mega Man Soccer an unusual example of a football game that was never released in Europe, Mega Man Soccer for the SNES answered the question of what the beautiful game would be like if cyborgs, androids, and robots got involved. Released in 1994, Mega Man Soccer included exhibition matches, tournaments, leagues, and multiplayer modes so that players could get their friends in on the Robo Soccer action. It even has its place in the Mega Man timeline. Set some time after Mega Man 4, the events of Mega Man Soccer kick off when a sudden explosion interrupts a football game that's being broadcast online. TV. When the smoke clears, all of the players have been replaced by the nefarious Dr. Wily's robot creations, and the benevolent Dr. Light is having none of it. He sends Mega Man to the rescue, and mechanized on-pitch mayhem ensues. In the story mode, players start off with a team of Mega Men, but could recruit defeated players onto their squad as they progressed. For example, you could put Woodman in goal to form the root of your defense, or put Cutman in an attacking midfield role so that he could slice through the opposing team's formation. Need some blistering pace up front? Fireman could bring the heat. You're in for a treat, guys. I have a pun prepared for every one of these robots. Oh, no, hang on. I'm in the picture-in-picture -picture thing. Don't come back. Where are you going? 